do not just come like that. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's magnify him. Let's thank him. He's worthy. 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 Ziko tali kariya tala baba badosha. Rebe de gedo shanti rabadesa. Le ikon tali abadosa. Dira bande de gedisho broko tosa. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. We appreciate you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We say hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Hosanna to your name. Blessed be your name forever, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we have thanks. Amen. Lord, we give you praise and glory. We give you honor and thanksgiving. We magnify you. We glorify you. We thank you for another opportunity to come at your presence again, to come into your presence and to be fed by you. Another opportunity to fellowship together and to receive what we need to bet our miracles in this, in the coming year and in the coming decade. We give you praise and glory. We thank you for Wednesday, for Tuesday. We thank you for Wednesday. Yeah. We thank you for your word that came with power. We thank you for the healings and the deliverances. We thank you for the transformation. We thank you for the breakthroughs. We thank you for all that you've done in the past two days. And we thank you for what you are going to do today again in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit of God, we recognize your presence. We welcome you. This is your meeting. It's all about you. We ask that you take absolute control. We ask that you take total charge of this meeting. Glorify Jesus. Glorify the Father. Let everyone that participates in this meeting, let everyone have a testimony that will last for a lifetime. Transform destinies. Open the hearts of your, of, of your children to the revelation of your world. Give us a world that would, that would change our destinies. We ask for your world to transform us. We ask for miracles, signs, and wonders. Let there be mighty manifestations of your power. And we vow to give you all the praise at the end of it all. Be glorified forever, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank God for um, Tuesday. Um, what we receive from the Lord, and we thank God for Wednesday, what we also receive from the Lord. I believe that these words are charging our spirits and preparing us for what God is set to do in 2021, praise God, Hallelujah. and in the coming decade. I believe that we are receiving the words we need to be able to bet our miracles in 2021 and in the coming decade, praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Psalm 107 verse 20 says, He sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. When Daniel prayed and he inquired of the Lord, and after praying, the Lord sent him a book. When God wants to deliver you, he sends his word. The word of God is the deliverance power of God. And everything you need is encapsulated in the word of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why emphasis is placed on the word. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the more we place emphasis on the word, the more we, we, we give birth to what God has destined for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen to Jesus. Today we're going to be taking off from where we stopped yesterday. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. And um, I, I believe that our lives are going to be transformed by the word of God. Amen to Jesus. Amen. We all know that 2020 has been a very crazy year. Very crazy year. We never had any like this before. Before. It has been a year where we have seen the oppression of the devil. We have seen the wickedness of the devil. But far beyond the oppression and the wickedness of the devil is the glory of God. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Far beyond what the devil is fighting to accomplish is what God has already accomplished. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are not to be afraid of what the devil is trying to do. We should celebrate what God has already done. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Whenever you see the attack of the devil, it is a response to what God has already done. Are you getting me? Yeah. It's a response to what God has already done. And no matter how much the devil mounts his attack, it cannot alter what has been written and what has already been done by the Lord. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Today I'm going to be sharing with us something I a message I titled um, by the help of the Holy Spirit. Never negotiate with the devil. Never negotiate with the devil. Never negotiate with the devil. Yesterday we handled stand strong. Today I'm going to be sharing never negotiate with the devil. For yesterday we learned something that Pharaoh in the Bible was a type of the devil. So by studying Pharaoh's measures, behaviors, and operations, we can understand the devil's measures, behaviors, and operations. Praise God. So when you study the measures of, the, of Pharaoh in the Bible, his behavior, when you study his operation, you can understand how the devil behaves. You can understand his measures and you can understand his operations. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Now, um, you are told in warfare that for you to win a war, the first thing you must do is to first know yourself. Are you getting me? Yes. First, you must know yourself. And the next thing you must do is to know your enemy. Are you getting me? Yes. 
If you know yourself and you don't know your enemy, you will lose. If you know your enemy and you don't know yourself, you will lose. Most of the time you see Christians, they know the enemy so much, but they don't know themselves. And you get what I'm saying? Yeah. They know the enemies. You see so, so, many, so many Christians, they amplify the devil so much and they play light on Jesus and on themselves. So they are always on the losing end when it comes to spiritual warfare. And you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, um, I remember once a young man was um, under my tutelage and he told me he was going for a vigil. And when he came back for the vigil, I told him something. He, he, he was actually living with me and under my tutelage. And I told him something. I said, what, that vigil you went for, 70% of the prayers they prayed were about the devil. True or false? And he said, true. And I said, so who did you go to worship? <laughs> so who did you go to Because whosoever you talk about so much, you amplify the person, and that person actually becomes the one you worship. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. I said, if you spend 70% of your time praying about the devil, that means actually you actually went to worship him. Are you getting me? And so the devil plays a fast game on Christians to make us always talk about him. We amplify him so much. We know so much of him and know so little of Jesus and know so little or nothing about ourselves and he wins us in battle. Secondly, if you know so much about Jesus and you know so much about yourself and you don't know the strategies of the devil, he can also be cunning to you. Are you getting me? Yeah. So that's why the balance of the two is very important for you to enforce the victory that you have in Christ. When Moses approached Pharaoh to let his people go, the first action response of Pharaoh to Moses was to place a siege on the Israelites. We learned that yesterday, so I will not stay on that again. The first thing he did was to do what? Place a siege on them. Yesterday, we understood the power of siege. We understood how the devil, or sorry, on Tuesdays, on Wednesday, sorry, we understood how the devil wants to place siege on every child of God. That's his first response. That's the first response of the devil. I'm telling you, that's what most satanic businessmen employ in business. Unknown to them is a satanic approach, and they call it business. But even Christians employ it in business, and they call it business, but it's a satanic approach. And that's why I see a lot of people who claim to be businessmen, who even some Christians, in no time, their measures, their views, we begin to backfire against them because they've applied the devil's approach to do business. And when you use the devil's strategy, you must pay him at the end of the day. When you use somebody's product, what do you do? You pay the person for using. So you have used the devil's strategy. You must pay the devil at the end of the day. <laughs> you see some people after doing business and they say they have succeeded in business, but their children cannot inherit anything. And the later part of their life, sickness and disease. Why? Because you took the devil's product and traded with it. You must pay him <laughs> for trading with his what? Product. So the devil uses sieges. That was his first response. That's always his first response. Anytime a child of God wants to emancipate, a child of God wants to enforce the freedom of God that God has given to him, the first thing the devil does is to use it. We did that on Tuesday and on Wednesday, and I will not go further on that. Amen. Yeah. The next thing Pharaoh did was to try to negotiate with Moses. Now, when the devil uses a siege and it doesn't work, the next thing he does is what? Try to negotiate. <laughs> You must understand this strategy. And these things I'm teaching you here by the help of the Holy Spirit, I have experienced them. Are you getting me? And these are the, these are the way life operates. Like we learned on Wednesday, life is the only race, marathon race that has hurdles. And a race is either sprint with hurdle or marathon without hurdles in the athletics. But life is the only marathon race that has hurdles in it. That's why it's not fair. <laughs> and that's why you must understand what it means to what? Know your enemy and know how to wear him out. We learned that on Wednesday. All right. So the next thing he does, try to negotiate. And that's what Pharaoh did. Pharaoh made selfish negotiations which were not favorable to Moses and the Israelites. Pharaoh made three negotiations with Moses. And his first negotiation was after the fourth plague. You can imagine that. First plague came, he didn't negotiate. Second plague came, he didn't negotiate. Third plague came, he didn't negotiate. After fourth plague, that's when he started talking about negotiation. The devil you are dealing with is also a stretching individual. He has an elasticity limit. He could stretch also. So don't think that he's going to give it to you on the platter of gold. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> he's not going to give it to you on the platter of gold. He's going to stretch you because he can stretch. After the fourth plague, that is when he started talking about negotiation. And he does that afterwards, siege has failed. Somebody tried to put a siege on me and my family this year. The siege failed. Then he's trying to do negotiations. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> so you must understand this. Praise God. 
that are the fourth play. This shows how hardy and stubborn the devil is. When the devil claims to negotiate with you, beware. Beware. He's hardy and stubborn. That's how shows up that, that and when he tries to negotiate with you, just know that it's also another game plan again. What was the first negotiation of the devil? Exodus chapter 8, verse 25 to 26. It says, And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not meet so to do, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, and we dare not stone us. Understand something here. Firstly, Moses told Pharaoh, to let them go and sacrifice to God in the wilderness as he was instructed by God to do. And you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Moses told Pharaoh, let's go and sacrifice in the wilderness. God told me to tell you that we should go sacrifice in the wilderness, not in the land, but in the wilderness. And you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Exodus chapter 3, verse 18b, it says, the Lord God of the Hebrews had met with us, and now let us go with BCG. Three days journey into the wilderness, the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Exodus chapter 5, verse 1 says, And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Toss here the Lord God of Israel, let my people go, that we may hold a feast unto the Lord in the wilderness. So Moses was specific on the location where they must go to sacrifice to God. And you understand what I'm saying? He was specific. But in response, Pharaoh told Moses to sacrifice in the lands, not the wilderness. You see that? <laughs> these, are, these are the devil's tricks. These are the fraudulent acts and the crookish act of the devil. Are you getting me? Moses was specific, but the devil, but, 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 but Pharaoh did what? He said, sacrifice what? In the land. Pharaoh said so because he was afraid that if he allows the Israelites to go to the wilderness, they will not come back again. That was his first fear. If I allow them to go, they will not come back again. This was why he tried to negotiate with Moses to make compromises. Are you getting me? Compromises. Because he said, if I allow this people to go to the wilderness, from there, they, will, they, will, they went to another place. They, will, they went to somewhere else. This is, for him, this is a trick to live. Are you getting me? Yeah. And let me understand something that the devil is a smart devil. Are you getting me? Yes. When you come with God's word, to him. He knows the end of that word. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of us feel that the devil is just going to accept what we say. The Lord has said and the devil will accept it. That's why Paul told Timothy, said that thou mightest war a good warfare based on the prophecies that were spoken over you. Prophecy has been spoken over you is not the end of it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. The devil knows that that prophecy has an agenda. And he knows the agenda is to liberate you. So he will not just accept your prophecy, hook, line, and sink, and go. No matter how you twist it. Are you getting me? The devil knows that if he allows us to sacrifice to and serve God the way God wants us to, he will lose his grip over all areas of our lives. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. This is why he tries to negotiate with us to make compromises in our service and our sacrifice to God. He knows if he lets us serve God the way God has told us to serve him. You will lose every area of our life. See, let me understand something. You are born again, yes. Your spirit is saved. Your spirit is perfect. And, and the devil has no hold over your spirit. But he tries to have a hold in your mind. And you get what I'm saying? And if he cannot have so much hold in your mind, he tries to have a hold in your body. So there will be something he can still use to attach you to himself. And you get what I'm saying? And this hold comes by tricky approaches he uses to make us make compromises. So, child of God, if you must bet your miracle in 2021, the first thing to beware of is compromises. Are you getting what I'm saying? The first thing to beware of is what? Compromises. Compromises. Beware of them. He will try to make you compromise. But beware of it. Secondly, sheep are unclean and abominable animals to the Egyptians. They are abominable animals to the Egyptians. In fact, when the Israelites came to Egypt, they had to go to Goshen. Goshen was like an outskirt. Where the, the Israelites live alone because they are they are shepherds, they, they, they rear sheep, and the sheep and as an animal is an abominable animal to the Egyptians, so they could not live with the Egyptians because of their, their, their trade, their profession. Are you get what I'm saying? And so the sheep also happens to be the major animal used by the Israelites for sacrifice. So Pharaoh gave them an option that will bring 
trouble between them and the Egyptians. That's the option he gave them. This negotiation strategy of the devil is to make us serve and sacrifice to God in ways and manners that we cause wrong trouble between us and others. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. But you say, but I'm serving God. Why am I having this kind of... There are some troubles that you can avoid. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. There are some troubles that are avoidable. They are to sacrifice an animal that's an abomination. And yet you are telling them to sacrifice in the land. So that's what he says. So that you want the Egyptians to stone us. So as we are sacrificing God, sacrificing to God, they will start stoning us. Sometimes Christians, we are trapped on some, some unnecessary battles. Sometimes we are trapped some unnecessary troubles. Some troubles we can avoid, we attract them because of what? Because of foolishness. Because we listen to some of the devil's negotiations. Are you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you must bet your miracle this 2021, you must beware of wrong troubles. You must beware of, of useless wars. It's not every war you fight. Are you getting me? It's not every war you fight. It's not every battle you fight. It's not every battle you fight. Everybody throws, throws something at you, you respond. No! 2021, if you must bet miracles, there are some battles you must ignore. No matter how much they push at you, you must ignore them. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. No matter how anointed you are, there are some battles you must ignore. I remember when uh, 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 in, in Nigeria, our first mission's um, location, our first location, um, a, a man came and said we should remove our home speaker in the area where our church. He said, if you don't remove the home speaker, he will remove the church from there. I, they called me. I was not in, in town that period. They called me. I, I placed a cross from where I was. The man entered into oblivion. Another man came again and did the same. In fact, I just came to church that morning and they just saw, saw the, some of the members came and said, see what the man did. Do. If I see what the man was saying. Uh, and when they, when they told me, I just smiled. I entered into church. I stood on the altar. I cursed the, I cursed the man. He entered into oblivion. We didn't hear from them. We didn't see from them again. Are you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But I remember here in Ghana, in the location where our church is, <laughs> one of the persons who was in church, who was actually the devil's implant in the church, came and told us, hey, the people in the area are saying, our home speaker is disturbing, is disturbing, is disturbing, we should lower, he said, so he said, hey, pastor, what you do is that during the service time, you can um, lower the volume, and after um, service, you can, he was just giving some ideas that were stupid, and we told them, remove the home speakers. He was shocked, we told them, remove the home speakers. Why? I am a missionary, I am a foreigner, in my father's land, I can be placing courses and be dealing with the devils, are you understand what I'm saying? Those kind of home speaker devils I can place. And moreover, the location where, where, where we were in, 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 in Nigeria, it was our own property. Are you getting me? So you cannot challenge me my own property, my own church property. So I can place all the courses and everything. But here, we are renting. I'm a missionary, I'm a foreigner. That, that fight is a stupid fight. So I told them, remove the home speaker. He was like, no, no, no. I said, remove it. And they removed it. In 2021, don't fight, don't fight foolish battles. Are you getting me? Yes. Don't fight what? Foolish battles. Don't attract stupid troubles. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm. You are you are in a you are in a in a face me, I slap you um, compound. And then at night you wake up and you're praying and you are shouting and disturbing the whole compound. They will eject you for nothing. And then you say, This is a trial of it's not a trial of your faith. Are you getting what I'm saying? You attracted an unnecessary battle. Beware of wrong troubles. And that's how the devil negotiates with us. So we have to be aware of this. The second negotiation that the devil did was that Pharaoh did was Exodus 8 verse 28. It says, and Pharaoh said, I will let you go that ye may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only ye shall not go very far. You see that? First, sacrifice in the land. Now, second, don't go very far. You think that the devil will stop his negotiation? He will keep throwing negotiations at you. And you should be wise enough to know how to never negotiate with him. Are you getting me? <laughs> Pharaoh gave them a second option of going to the... Now you can go to the wilderness. So she says, wilderness, you want to go to. You can go. He said, but don't go far. In other words, so they will be within his reach for further oppression and slavery. <laughs> You see, the devil tries to negotiate with us for us to go on to serve and sacrifice to God, but we should not go far in our service and sacrifice to God. 
Are you getting me? Yeah. Don't go for a need. Don't worry. Say God. You go to church. That's why I see. That's why I see religion in Christianity today. But I go. Just go, no problem. You can go to church. No problem. You can, you can be in the choir. But don't go far. Don't go far. Don't go far. Just be calm. Don't, 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 make, don't take it too much. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, the devil calls going far in service and sacrifice to God it, things like fanatic Christianity. Going too far. Or over spirituality, ah, brother, why are you too spiritual? Don't be over spiritual. You are a fanatic. You are too fanatical. Come on, this thing, you are taking it too far. Hey, just take it calm. This is, this is, uh, all of us are taking it calm. You take it calm. And whenever the devil tells you take it calm, it's because he wants you to be at his at close range for him to keep oppressing you. Yeah. As, as, as calm as you have been taking it, see how life is. Bishop Bishop said, those who take it easy in life end up having life hard on them. <laughs> you want to serve God, but 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 in, in, in a lackadaisical and calm manner, so that people will not say that you are a fanatic. So people will not say you are a spiritual. Keeps waiting for them to commend you. You will never attain God's desire for you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whatever name the devil calls it, his intention is to keep us within his reach for further oppression and slavery. We are either hot or cold to remain useful in God. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We are either hot or cold to remain useful in God. God says, it's either you are hot or cold. If you are cold, then he knows that you are cold and then he knows how to heat you up. If you are hot, fine, he keeps heating you up. But he says, if you are lukewarm, he said, I will spill you out of my mouth. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you are either hot or cold. But don't stand in the middle. A lot of time in Christianity, we stand in the middle. We say we don't want to be fanatical. What do you mean by fanatic Christianity? It's either you are radical or you are zero. If you are zero in your Christian work, we know how to help you and jack you off back. But you say you are in the middle, it's a dangerous zone to be in. Just like sitting on a fence in life is a dangerous place to sit on. It is better to be fanatically free than to be lukewarmly in bondage. Mm. It is better to be fanatically free than to be lukewarmly in bondage. I don't mind what they call me. People have called me names. People have said that, hey, I don't know, I've not seen kind of terrible people. I'm not, you, you can call me what you want to call me, but I prefer to be fanatically free than to be lukewarmly in bondage. So if you must bet the miracle for 2021, you have to be aware of lukewarmness. We all have to be aware of what? Lukewarmness. You either choose to be on fire or to be on fire. You see, because you can't afford to be cold in 2021. We see how 2020 played out. It never took us by surprise because we're playing defensive Christianity. We can't afford to play it. We can't afford to play it now. We can't afford to play defensive Christianity now. Again, no, we can't. We can't. We can't. So that's the second negotiation point the devil uses on, uses on us. We must ensure that we are not lukewarm. Because he will try to negotiate with us to become what? Lukewarm. The third negotiation that the devil used, Exodus chapter 10, verse 8 to 11. You can see that the devil kept negotiating. Sorry, Pharaoh kept negotiating and negotiating and negotiating. You think that the devil will just allow you enforce your freedom like that? <laughs> you think he will allow you bet your miracle like that? He will negotiate and negotiate and negotiate. All are different avenues to ensure that you don't get what God has given to you in totality. Exodus chapter 10 verse 8 to 11 says, And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh, and he said unto them, Go, serve the Lord your God, but who are they that shall go? You see, you see, you see, you see trouble. Okay, now go and serve. But who, who even said they are going with you, sir? Who are those to go? Who are those to go? <laughs> and Moses said, we will go with our young and with our old. I like Moses. With our sons and our daughters. With our flocks and with our heads. We will go. For we must hold a feast of the Lord. In other words, we are moving in totality. Everybody is migrating. Everybody is moving. Ah! Pharaoh looked and said, ah! And he said unto them, let the Lord, is it, let the Lord be so with you as I will let you go and your little ones look to it for evil is before you. You see, the devil makes it feel like he likes you. 
is thinking of your welfare. I've seen them, they do it like business. Ah, but the family, what if it is a life of the devil? If you look at what the is saying, he said, ah, okay, fine, you want to go. He said, but you see, if you are going with your, your children, there's evil before, you don't know the danger that's ahead of the road, you cannot risk their life. You can't risk the life of the children. Who, who, is it, are they your children? Pharaoh, are they your children? When did you start caring about them? When all the while you put us in bondage, all of a sudden you now love our children. He says, not so. Go now ye that are men and serve the Lord for that ye did desire. And they, we, and they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. You see what he said? He said, ah, you want to take the children there is danger ahead, though. It is risky. The wilderness is a risky place to go to. Okay, you that are men, you people should go. Don't risk the life of the children. When the devil te te tells you things as if he loves you, he never loves you. <laughs> it is now you care about the lives of your children. But when he was putting them in bondage, he didn't care. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So long as you are under the devil's bondage, he doesn't care. But when you want to break free, he begins to care. <laughs> Pharaoh gave them a choice of going without their children, wives, family, and belongings. And why did he do this? He did it as a bait to bring them back to Egypt, knowing that they cannot live without their families and belongings. And go alone. If you go alone, when you stay in wilderness for three days, you remember your wife and your children, and you will come back. It's, it was a simple strategy. The devil wants you to Leave your family and belongings with him so you will always come back to him. Hear this child of God. Are you understand something? He wants you to leave your family and belongings with him so you always come back to him because he has something you are holding. Sorry, he has, uh, he's holding something that you have. He's holding your possessions. Are you getting it? Firstly, the devil wants you to leave your family members as unbelievers. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. He makes us believe that so long as we are saved, we are safe. Are we together? Yes. And our family members do not matter. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the greatest deceptions that many Christians have suffered. I'm born again. It's okay. My family members, whether they are born again or not, there's no problem. That's a lie. That's a lie from the devil. That's a lie. Are you getting what I'm saying? You know the reason why it's a lie? Because an unsaved family member will always be a cause of concern to God and heaven. And so long as an unsaved family member is a cause of concern to God and heaven, it's also a cause of concern to you, whether you like it or not. Are you getting what I'm saying? Our family members that are not yet saved, they are cause of concern to us. Whether we are saved or not, but they are cause of concern. Because why? Their destinies are tied to our destiny. The reason why God got you saved is because you have to save others. Mm. The reason why we are saying, I don't understand this selfish Christianity that we have begun to live in recent time. In those days, when a man gets saved, he prays for his family members to be saved. But in these times, I don't understand what is happening. We get saved, and then we get saved, and then we are we are we are we are comfortable with our salvation. But that is not what Christianity is all about. Christianity is get saved and get your family members saved. Why? Because their destinies are attached to your destiny. In 2021, if you have a family member that is not saved, you cannot leave that family member like that. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must intercede for that member. You must cry unto God for the salvation of the souls of your father, your mother, your brother, your uncles, your aunties. They cannot be going to hell again and you are there. And you are celebrating Jesus. I'm born again and that's what that matters. That's not true. Their souls matter to God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Secondly, the devil wants you to go far in your service and sacrifice to God and not carry your family along. Are you seeing that? Yeah. And when this happens, they will slow you down and distract you in your pursuit of God. In the UK, in the UK, parents went to church. Yes, many years ago, they went to church. And while they were going to church, they left their children in the in the playgrounds, and they went to church. Are you get what I'm saying? Yeah. They went, they left, they went to church, and they left their children in their playground, in the playgrounds. So the children were catching phone while the parents were catching fire. The children were catching phone while the parents were catching Jesus. Are you get what I'm saying? Yeah. The children were catching phone while the parents were growing in grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. But you know the problem. 
By the time the parents got old and they died, the children knew nothing about Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? So what happened? They only knew about playgrounds and merry-go-rounds. So what did they do? When they grew up and their parents began to die, they saw the church halls and they were asking, what are these things used for? They began to sell the church halls to amusement parks. Because what they were used to was what? Amusement park. Let me let you understand something. This is going to be very real. If you must serve God eh, and enjoy the fullness of service to God, your family must follow you alongside. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? They must follow you alongside. You cannot be serving God in 2021 and your children are doing other things. No. I remember in this mission field, when we began to do long hours of service, our children would be with us in church. People would be tired, but our children would be there in church. Six hours of service. Six hours of teaching the word. Our children will be with us in church. They will be itching to go, but we'll keep them in church. And the, some of the people that were coming to church were looking at us as what kind of crazy and wicked parents are these? But we'll keep them in church, teaching them what today. These children, as small as they are, they can sit down in church. In, in fact, they can sit down in adult service without stress. At their age, they sit down for service. And when I'm preaching, my daughter will be saying, Daddy, preach. Daddy, you're amazing. At the age of four, he's already saying, Daddy, preach. Daddy, you're amazing. Daddy, your message was wonderful. I remember one day at home, my daughter came to me and said, Daddy, teach me how to preach. My mother said, glory to God. Four years old, she's already telling me, Daddy, teach me how to preach. Four years old, she's already praying in tongues. Four years old, they're already holding microphone, and they're praying in church. When, 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 I, when, when, I, when I'm about to leave our uh, 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 country for this mission field, somebody told me, said, ah, leave your wife and your children here. You go and check the land first and come back. Uh, a, 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 a Ghanaian told me that. Nigerians told me, a Nigerian told me that. And I looked at them, and I said, hey, sorry, you. for me, me and my family are going. Are you getting what I'm saying? If I'm a missionary, they are missionaries. And we missioned it together. And you get what I'm saying? See, you, you can't be leaving your children out of serving God. In 2021, you must carry them by force. You must carry them. You don't like church? You are grounded on this. You are grounded on that. We do it to them. You must sit with Jesus. Why? Because if you don't take them along now, they will drag you back tomorrow. When your children become prayer point, by the time they're supposed to be sitting down and relaxing and eating the fruit of your labor, your children will not become your prayer point. Mm. They become your prayer point. When you are supposed to be praying for others, your children now become prayer point. Far be it from you in, in, in 2021. Amen. Far be it from us in 2021. Amen. We will not fall for this negotiation of the devil. Amen. If they have not been serving God, it's time to cook them in service to God. Sometimes they will tell you, I don't want, I don't want. Sometimes my, my, my daughter will say, Daddy, I don't want to read. You don't read Bible study? No cartoon for you again. Us, oh, Daddy, I want to read. As children of God, this is one last negotiation strategy the devil uses against us. And you know what I'm saying? The devil's negotiations are never favorable to children of God. They are never favorable to us. Don't think you ever favor. The devil does not like us. And his negotiations are never favorable. He doesn't have our interests at heart. And you get what I'm saying? The devil is not in negotiation. It's not a negotiator. He is a violent dictator. He is a tyrant dictator. He does not understand the language of please. He only understands the language of force. Are you getting me? It's his interest he goes after. And so we must understand this as we pray into 2021, as we push into 2021. He never will try to do what is favorable to us. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. And that's the reason why we must not negotiate with him. Yeah, this very well. Moses is a type of Jesus. Why? Because he was the, 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 the physical savior of Israel who brought them out of Egypt. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13 says, And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. Also, Moses was the first human savior. Prophesied in Obadiah chapter 1, verse 21. Obadiah chapter 1, verse 21 says, And Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. It says, Saviors, plural, Saviors. And Moses was the first of this kind of Savior. Are you understand what I'm saying? So you understood the way a Savior should think. Are you getting me? See, the reason why you are born again in your family is because you are a savior and you must understand the savior's mentality. Are you getting me? Yes. You and I are the other saviors prophesied in this verse. 
So what, do, so what does that mean? Moses stood his ground concerning what he wanted. He never shifted his position. And in the end, Pharaoh gave, Pharaoh gave him to his demands. He knew he's a savior. He knew he's a prophet to bring the Israelites out of Egypt. And he stood his ground. He never gave in to the negotiation of the devil. I let you understand something. See, no matter how small you think you are, you are a savior. Amen. No matter how small I think I am, I am a savior. Amen. Let me tell you something. There are destinies tied to your destiny. Mm. There are destinies attached to your destiny. Even if it is one destiny, it is what standing your ground for. Yes. Even if it is one person, it is what standing your ground for. It is what never negotiating with the devil for. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Exodus chapter 10 verse 9 says, And Moses said, We will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks, with our heads we will go. For we must hold a feast on the Lord. In fact, he took our time to itemize what they will go with. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Because he didn't want to give room for, for lapses or for uh, um, confusion or, or, or you know, when, it, when Pharaoh said, but he didn't tell me that. No, uh, um, like, like, like my lawyer would say, he didn't want to give room for any lacuna. <laughs> no room for lacuna. Everything must be clear. I am not negotiating with you on your terms. I am taking my terms. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. And in Exodus about 12, verse 1 says, And he called Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both you and your children and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord as you have said. All you demanded for, take it and go. Hear me very well. The devil will keep trying to negotiate, mm. but you must stand your ground as to what you want mm. and never shift position. In the end, the devil will give in to your demands. Amen. Never accept the negotiations of the devil. Never negotiate with him. In international relations, you are taught never to negotiate with terrorists. Is that not so? In this kingdom, you are taught never to negotiate with the devil. Let them call you names. Let them call you, you are too difficult. You are too this, you are too that. You are not the first they called names. Do you know what Moses, told, what Aaron did, uh, what, sorry, what Pharaoh did to Moses? At a point in time, he told Moses, never come before my sight again. Moses said, as you have said this, so I will do it. I'm leaving you. But when the time came, when the time came, he was the one that looked for Moses. Are you understand what I'm saying? So never nego in twin as this year comes to an end, start placing the start writing the things you want to happen in 2021 and don't negotiate with the devil. The devil will try to negotiate on some things and try to maybe reduce God. I'm expecting this and this. The devil says through is three you're expecting, just take two. Two is two is still past mark. No, 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 no. In 2021, you are meant to pursue, overtake. And without fear, recover oh, all, not amen, some, amen, amen. not some. Amen. In 2021, don't think of recovering some. The devil has stolen from you in 2020. You will recover all. Amen. Amen. And when you're recovering all, it includes for your wife, your children, your siblings, your family members. Are you going to say? You recover all. <laughs> so never negotiate with the devil. Galatians 5 verse 1 says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherein Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Ephesians 6 verse 13 to 14 says, Wherefore take you, take to you the whole armor of God, that you may be, you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. Stand therefore, having your loins get about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, in 2021, stand. Amen. Don't negotiate with the devil. As, as, to, as, as this year is coming to an end, if you have not written what you want for 2021, if you have not heard from God, go and hear from God now. And as you hear from him, stand on everything. Yes, 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 yes. Don't accept any negotiation from the devil. Mm. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> because if, in fact, he will start negotiating from now, self. Mm. 
He will start trying to negotiate. But never you accept any negotiation from the devil. And you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Never you accept any negotiation from the devil. Why? He never has your interest at heart. Yeah. He's coming. He, the reason why he's negotiating with you is because he wants to keep you in more captivity. He wants to keep you in mediocrity. He wants to keep you in bondage. He never wants you to enjoy the full liberty you have in Christ. So what do you do? Enforce your liberty. Yeah. Tell him, devil, I would not take your negotiation. I can't accept this this your, this your offers they are not juicy they are not not they are, they are they are not useful to me what god has given me is more than enough i refuse your own Amen. in 2021 never negotiate with the devil never negotiate with him stand your ground and say this 2021 i'm getting this 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 and make sure you get it I will close with a testimony. A particular man of God, he was believing God for a car. So he began to confess the car. He had a period of time that he gave for the car to manifest physically. He began to confess the car and confess the car and confess the car. And then, a day to the day he gave for the manifestation, the car had not come. And then finally, the day came and the car did not come. And then he went back to God and said, but God, I did what you said I should do. I acted in faith. I confessed. I did everything you said I to do. How come did the car not come? And God said, hey, listen to me first. My word is not a lie. You were doing very well from the day you started confessing. But when you got to 11 o'clock, a day to the day it was to manifest, <laughs> your faith dropped. Why? Because you already started giving up on this thing manifesting. He said, and as a result of that, you could not see the manifestation. He said, but, but the Lord said, you know what I want to tell you? I want to tell you that your car is hanging between heaven and earth. It is suspended. And the Lord said, if you can pump a little more confessions and faith, your car will drop. And the man said, thank you, Lord. And he pumped the confession more a little. The car dropped. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. In 2021, don't negotiate with the devil. Stand your ground. Everything you want for 2021 now. See, write things that are outrageous. Are you getting me? Things that are out of the world. Things that you know that your mind cannot get for you. Yes. Things you know that your pockets cannot get. See, there are things, uh, me and my family were believing God for that. We know that our bank account cannot get it. Our pocket cannot get it. And that's why we're acting in faith. I get what I'm saying? Yeah. But don't negotiate with the devil. Never leave. Because the moment you start negotiating, your liberation is reduced. I pray for you today, the grace to stand strong and refuse to negotiate with them. You receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we lift up your hands this moment? And I'm going to pray one prayer. Say, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name I, receive I receive grace to stand strong, stand strong on, the Jesus gave me on the victory Jesus gave me and never negotiate, and never negotiate with, the with the devil. Open your mouth and pray. Ipranda supalada basha kadala babada basha rikande bido bilebe di barande lebe shutarada ipranda kurati santeri balade brataya lesita suta libra dana basaba I receive the grace to stand strong in the victory that Jesus won for me before the foundations of the earth and he enforced on the cross of Calvary and never to negotiate with the devil no matter the pressure from the devil I refuse to negotiate grace to never negotiate with the devil Lisokati karati paratu paratu salati kereti labashonda yendri balabobodobo si barababadosha regite lebebelebebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebelebeleb
I accept your lordship over my life. I choose to follow you all the days of my life. And I choose to say no to the devil all the days of my life. To say no to the devil all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now, I pray for everyone person who has said that prayer. Lord, I pray for everyone person who has said that prayer. I ask, Lord, for the grace to follow you to be released upon them in the name of Jesus. I ask, King of glory, Lord, the grace to serve you all the days of your life and never to negotiate to the devil that you release to them. Thank you, Lord and King, in the name of Jesus. Now, I want to be praying for everyone person who is sick or who needs a breakthrough in one way or the other. I want to join my faith with you and I want to pray with you. Lord, I pray for every one person who is sick in their body, who need healing in their body, who need healing in their mind. King of glory, I enforce the finished work of Jesus and I declare that by the stripes of Jesus, you are made whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. I speak to every part of your body, every organ in your body. I command the healing streams of Jesus to run through them in the name of Jesus. Amen. I command the healing power of Jesus to run through them in the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare by the stripes of Jesus, you are made whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. I cause infirmity to the root. I cause sickness to the root. I cause leukemia. I cause cancer. Amen. I cause swellings, Amen. I cause lumps Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I cause every form of infirmity in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I decree that the healing power of Jesus runs through your system Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And everyone person believing God for a, for, for, for a, a last hour and 11th hour breakthrough and miracle, I join my faith with your faith and I decree that before this month comes to an end, your miracle will come in your hand in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Your miracle will come to your hand in the name of Jesus. Amen. I shift and I push your miracle to your hand in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree testimonies will run in your direction in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Blessed be your name forever. Be glorified. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. amen and amen and amen. God bless you. We want to appreciate God for this opportunity again that he has given us today. And I believe that you are blessed. Please tell a friend to tell a friend that what God is doing here is important for every one of us. Amen to Jesus. Amen. God bless you for joining in. God bless you for the word you have received. And I decree and declare that the blessings of God shall remain forever in your life. Amen. 2021 shall give to you what has been deprived from you throughout the whole of 2020 in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord grant you his peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.